We got two more to go. These two are near and dear to my heart. This first one, he's just so special. Look at him over there. Uh, he's straight out of Latvia. You guys all know him, you love him. Giannis, the Latvian Eagle Patelis. Detroit players, Tim's for my hooligans in Brooklyn. That's Dead right. right, if they head right, Biggie there and I. Pop a new school since days are under rules. Never lose, never choose to. Bruce Cruz, who do something to us? Come on. I, I love that song. That is a great song. And just so I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Keenan? Just so he doesn't think that he's the only guy that likes good music around here. Um. If you guys don't like my story, please blame Lan Tawney, because I ran this by him first. And he goes, man, that was a great story. That's the one you should tell. I'm like, all right, I will. Um, and if you don't like the story, at least you can remember that song I walked up to, and then my new fly kicks. You guys seen these. I'm hoping you guys can see them from out there. I wore these. This is the second time I wore them. About a week ago, I wore them. It was, I was warm to a uh, volleyball practice for my little girls. And walking out, there just happened to be a, like a, uh, a middle school age kid with a skateboard. And I'm like, hey, let me, let me see that thing. Let me see if I still got it. Show my kids what a kickflip is. And uh, so I, she's like, yeah, go ahead, borrow it, you know. I'm like, yeah, kids, watch this kickflip. My mother-in-law happens to be in town. She watched practice that evening. So uh, one attempt, the board doesn't really even do anything. Second attempt, kind of stumble off of it. My mother-in-law's like, honey, you're going to break your leg or an ankle at least, you know, please be careful. I'm like, okay. No, I, and then the young girl that I borrowed the skateboard from, she's like, maybe you should start with an ollie. I'm like, okay, you're right, you're right. So I did my little ollie and gave the board back to her, no broken ankles. Um, so yeah, these shoes, are, they're kind of like a midlife crisis thing almost for me. I'm like, what am I doing in skate shoes that I used to wear like 30 some years ago? But anyways, buddy hooked me up. Um, it's kind of a dad story, so that's why I kind of want to tell a little story like about my new dad shoes that I got on right now. Um, but about two years ago, I'm at work in the office, and my wife Jennifer calls me on the phone. She says, um, we're heading down to the Livingston shelter. They've got three blue tick coon hounds down there. I'm like, all right, I know where this is going. Um, I'm like, are, are you sure you want a blue tick coon hound? Like, have, have we, what do we know about those? She's like, we're sick of waiting on you. We're going to go check out these dogs. You should come down and meet us if you want to have any input on this at all. I'm like, all right. So I'll meet you down there. So I had maybe whatever it is, 20 minutes to drive over Bozeman Pass and down into the Livingston. On the way, I'm thinking like, man, I, I know I've been on a few mountain lion hunts. I know some guys with hound dogs and all, all the guys I know that are hound handlers, like they're pretty good woodsmen. Maybe I could be like a better woodsman, woods person if I had a hound dog, because they're, they're out there more, they're out there all winter long, I'd get to hunt more, I'd be in the woods when I'm usually not in the woods, um, probably get better at tracking. So I'm sort of like already talking myself into being a, being a hound, hound handler. And you should know that the prior year, we've been shopping dogs, or I should say I was shopping dogs. And the kids were like, we don't really give a shit about what kind of dog we get. We just need a thing with like four legs and fur on it and we'd be stoked, you know? So, you know, you've gone from upland birds to retrievers and back and something in between, blood trailing dogs. And finally, they're just like, they're on the way to the shelter. So we get there and we walk through the place and for whatever reason, they had him in like in the, the, the back kennel. And um, we get in there, and these people are real professionals that run these uh, kennels or shelters, whatever they call them these days. Because as we get in there, there's three of them left. Their sister had already been adopted. And uh, the guy looks at uh, my girls, and he goes, uh, hey, uh, do you girls want to get in the kennel with these, guys, with these little puppies? And I'm like, okay, we're not leaving here without a dog, right? So now my girls are inside of a cage with three little, you know, 10, 15 pound blue tick coon hounds that are just loving all over them. Their big paws and their giant ears flopping everywhere. And I'm like, Jennifer, th this is what you want, right? Like, 
that thing right there is going to turn into like, I don't know, I think I read quickly online, like 70, maybe 80, 90 pounds. It's got, it's got a big, loud bark. Um, and you and I are going to be doing a lot of poop picking up here in the next five years because those two in there with them, all they do is cuddle and love on the dog. They're not into poop picking up yet, you know? And um, so, whatever, an hour later, we're bringing Mingus home with us. Now, fast forward almost a year to December. I've done a little bit of training with Mingus and um, sort of getting him ready to, to trail animals. And, um, and now I'm trying to get him to follow a mountain lion track and to, to see a mountain lion in a tree. And I'm really lucky I've got some great mentors that have been helping me out with my mountain lion hunting, one of them being um, my buddy Jake Gribb, who's got a, pa a little pack of female walkers. He's got three of them. So when he takes me out, the name of the game is his get to run the track first, and then we come in behind Mingus on a leash, and he gets to bait. We follow him on the track to basically teach him that that's the track that he needs to follow to the tree. Um, it's important to know when these hound dogs, when they're on a track, when they first find a track, they have different barks that they do. The first bark that they do is called a strike. And so if you've just cut your dog loose or maybe you walked them up to a track, when they first hit that scent, they let out a bark that just lets you know that, hey, I found something. And it's like a boo or just a boo or just any sort of noise that just says, hey, I'm on to something, like let's go hunting. And then from there is they're tracking. And again, it's different for all dogs, but they sort of let out a little bark every now and then. Sometimes it's five seconds, sometimes a minute goes by, but they give you just a little you know, as they're on the track and following. Now Mingus, being a blue tick coon hound, he's been described on track as Mike Tyson, because he's now gone from 15 pounds to about 80. So he's a big boy these days. But his voice hasn't really quite caught up to him yet. So when he's on track, it's kind of like a And you're like his voice just cracks as, as, as he's going on track. So another buddy of mine called him like a, a little, the hound dog version of Mike Tyson. Um, then when they get to a tree where usually this, the scent ends, the track ends, they do what's called a locate bark, which is a like I found them. Like this track ends here. I, I, think it's, I think it's in this tree above me. And at that point, once they make the decision, they go into what's called a, a tree bark, which is usually for most hounds, a choppy bark. That's just a boop, boop, boop. Burr, burr, just nonstop, as much as you can take it, to the point where now I, we all bring um, earplugs with us to the tree, because it's loud and it's nonstop, and uh, it'll, it, it can drive you nuts, but you, le you learn to enjoy it. So, if anybody's out there has ever mountain lion hunted, you know that you don't get to just go out and immediately get on a mountain lion track, and then 10 minutes later you find a mountain lion in a tree. What happens is you usually spend like days, maybe even weeks of time, even just finding a mountain lion track. And as a beginner, uh, beginning mountain lion hunter, it was taking me a lot of time and effort to even just find a track to run or walk with Mingus. But so I was working friends and having neighbors like constantly looking for mountain lion tracks. I'm sending pictures, you know, to all the neighbors. Hey, if you see one of these, let me know. And eventually it actually happens where neighbor's like, yeah, I think I got one in the past to the backyard in the, in the last day or so. So we head over there. Jay comes with me. We, we figure out that we're going to run this track. It's a very long track. We start at maybe 7 a.m. And we, his dogs finally tree this mountain lion at around 2 p.m. So as the plan, his dogs are already at the tree. We're walking up there. Uh, me and Mingus, he, I've got him on the leash. He's following the mountain lion track, kind of barking along, being happy. And when, he's, when we're maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 yards from a tree, Jake says, yeah, cut him loose and see what happens. So I cut him loose. Mingus follows that trail right to the base of the tree. Mind you, there's three walker hounds, paws up on the tree, chop barking, burr, 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 burr. You know, there's a mountain lion above us. And he gets there, and he comes up with a new bark that nobody ever knew before, and it's called the... Uh, ass grab bark, which is like, oh, I'm going to run around, oh, female, other hounds, boop, 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 this is fun, you know, and he decides to then take the track that we just walked in back out. My dog cannot figure out that the track goes up the tree and there's a mountain lion sitting in the tree above. Now, to his credit, it's a thick tree, you, you can't really see the whole mountain lion, 
But still, I'm like, man, look, there's three other dogs doing what they're supposed to do. Like, just put two and two together, man. There's a mountain lion right there. And uh, it's just not happening. He's like, he's like, oh, I'll play grab ass and kind of run around. And like, it's not happening. So I'm, I'm standing back from the tree a little bit, looking up there. And Mingus comes over by my side and I grab his head and I'm like, dude, look up there. Like, see it? Mountain lion. And Jake looks at me, just laughs. He's like, dude, listen, I've tried that a thousand times. Like, they just don't see the cat sometimes. Like, it is what it is. So all this effort that we've put into like trying to figure it out, trying to be a, you know, a, a mountain lion dog. And we finally have a cat above us, like, you know, 20 some feet in the tree. And we have to walk out of there. And my dog is no better for the experience, right? Like he, at, at this point, he just knows that like, there's something that smells in these tracks, but he hasn't put together that there's a lion in the tree above him. So we walk out of there, I'm kind of dejected. Well, luckily a week goes by and Jake calls me. I got a fresh track, bring Mingus, let's meet at so-and-so trailhead. So we meet up there and the week before we had an extremely long um, track, which lasted whatever that was, six, seven hours before we got this cat treed. Well, this morning we get to the track with all the dogs. The dogs are excited. They let out their barks. Uh, he cuts his dogs loose. And before we're even, we even start walking the track, we can hear his dogs treed basically just around the ridge. And uh, wow, Jake's like, yeah, that, that was fast, you know? So we're walking with Mangus, and again, he's got his nose down in the track, and he's sniffing, and burr, burr, you know, as we're, as we're going along, and he's, he's smelling it, and same thing, we get to about 30, 40 yards away, and we can see the cat. This time, it's a little bit more open, this tree. It's, it's, the branches are a little bit more open. The cat's maybe a little bit lower, and, and from 50 yards away, you can see the whole cat there. He's like, cut him loose. So I cut him loose. And man, same thing happens. He runs right in there on that track. Everybody else is like up on the tree, chopping away. Burr, 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 burr. And Mingus is just like, oh, this track goes to the tree, but then it goes right back out. So I'll follow it back out here again. And I'm like, no, it can't be. It can't be, please. So I'm just sitting there on the, on the snow, just head between my knees. Like, it's not going to happen. My dog's just not going to figure it out. He kind of comes by me again, and the pitch of the hill was pretty steep. So if the tree was coming out here, and you were maybe just 20 yards back, you were almost looking at eye level right at this cap. He comes by me again, and I'm like, man, I know Jake said it never works, but I should try it again, you know? So I grab Mingus' head, and I'm like, dude, look right there, you know? And as I'm holding his head, I can feel his head kind of does this, like, tremble and then it freezes up like a statue and then all of a sudden the deepest baddest ball you've ever heard and all of a sudden he's just like dude do you see there's a giant cat up in that tree i mean big big it's got like long tail on it holy shit dad look 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 boom, boom, boom. and i'm like yeah man it's happened i'm like i walk in front of mingus mingus is like dude get out of the way cat 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 boom, 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 boom. he goes to the tree he does the chopping bark he backs off more deep long balls i was just telling you how i was at volleyball practice and of course my little Latvian eaglets, they're already about this tall, even though they're only like seven to nine, and they seem to be getting the volleyball thing, and usually at practice, I'm walking around, you know, kind of stretching my wings, you know, puffed up, real proud of how my girls are doing. They're, they're passing, and not really setting, but they're passing. Pretty pout, proud, but I can tell you, when that dog is sitting there looking at his first mountain lion going, dude, look at that, that was a proud papa right there. <laughs> Thank you. Take that. Recently, niggas front ain't saying nothing, so I just.